some padding around my name. Padding is the space inside the control between the text and each edge. If I set the padding to 10, what shows of my name gets very small. That won't work. With the height at 30 and all that padding, there's not enough space for my letters. Rather than trying to figure out the best height, I will delete the height setting so the control can be whatever size it wants to be. If I need to control the range that my height will shrink or grow to, I can set min height and max height. Right now, however, space is not an issue. What happens if I change my vertical alignment? My control is inside my stack panel, which is inside my content panel grid. A grid can have rows and columns, but none are defined. So my grid currently is just a single cell with a stack panel inside. For what I have done so far, I wouldn't need the grid, but it is probably a good idea to keep it since I don't know if anything bad would happen if my phone app was missing it. I position my cursor over the value of top and double click my mouse to select the word. Typing replaces selection, and what I want to be deleted is my selection. So I start typing C. IntelliSense pops up. I press Tab to choose Center. Now that I see what happens, I don't think I will do that. The control moved, as per my instructions, to the center of the total area since I have not defined the grid row that my stack panel is in to have a specific height. I'll undo the change to the vertical alignment so my control goes back up to the top. I wonder what other properties might be interesting. I resize my windows so I can see the properties better. Changes go, but really we're the same And if we don't see eye to eye, no one is to blame There's somewhere there's a rainbow that never sings the blues When I find it, I'll send it straight to you Everything looks good so far, so and I will save all my files Now I click the run button, which both builds and runs if everything is okay Normally, I prefer to do this in two steps, especially if I think anything might have a problem. There is the phone emulator, there is the start screen, and there is my application. I see the two controls I just added. I click in the text box, and now I can type my name using the on-screen keyboard. The on-screen keyboard is a SIP, or Software Input Panel. The on-screen keyboard is the default input scope when running the emulator. My name is Crystal, which starts with capital C. The keyboard is showing little letters. I click on the shift key to toggle the display on the keyboard to uppercase. I see capital C, so I click on it. Capital C goes into my text box. If I was using a phone, I would be touching instead of clicking. I need a little R. I click on the shift key to toggle back to lowercase letters. I pick R. This is so slow. If I press page up, I can use my computer keyboard since I'm running the emulator. Using my keyboard is much faster. I have a place for my name and that's it. I click back, which terminates my application in the emulator. Before that happens, code in the page on navigating from method, if it exists, would be called. Code in the application closing event is also executed. I don't have code there now, but I might in the future. It's good to know what the possibilities are. In my solution window, I click on the green triangle icon to run my app again. I see my name is not there anymore. I've done nothing to save it or display it. When I leave my main page, anything in the controls is lost. I would like to save my name. I go to the markup and click on the text box containing my name. In the Properties window, I click on the Events tab. There are all kinds of events I can use. The default is Text Changed, which happens every time any character is typed or deleted. I only need to store my name when all the typing is done. The event I want 
is Selection Changed. I double click in the property setting for the Selection Changed event. This creates a method declaration and curly braces for my code block. This is also called my Event Handler. Any code I write between the start and end braces will be executed when my name is changed. Before I create any code, in case I need to look up help, it is good to remind myself what I'm using. My net development language is C Sharp, which is part of Visual Studio.net, which is built on top of Microsoft.net Framework, which has common components to simplify development and deployment. C Sharp is also case sensitive. Where do I save my name? The Windows Phone has a storage area that is isolated and protected from other applications. It is called isolated storage. The easiest way to save my name in isolated storage is to use a key value pair. My app only needs to save one setting in isolated storage, but I could have more. The settings in isolated storage can be defined for each user on an application level or a site level. I will use isolated storage application settings since I do not plan to share my name setting with another application on my site, at least not right now. First, I will create a reference to my application settings. I start typing capital I, lowercase s, O L A T E D, capital S, lowercase T. E O R A G E capital S lowercase E T T I N G S isolated storage settings however has a red squiggly line underneath indicating it is not understood the little blue rectangle under the first character of the word means this keyword is contained in one or more namespaces I press control period and am prompted to choose a namespace. The one I want is the first one on the list. Before I double click to choose it, look at the using statements listed at the top of my code. The last one currently is Microsoft.Phone.Controls. I double click System.IO.Isolated Storage. A new using statement appears in the directives at the top of my code. Namespaces contain code that can be used by my code. Since not every program needs to use isolated storage, the namespace for it is optional. Now that the namespace is referenced, the color of my isolated storage settings keyword is aqua. I need to specify the name I will use to refer to my settings. Hmm. Application Settings. App Settings is a good name. I can name the reference whatever I want. I could have picked something else like My Settings or Isolated Storage Name Pairs or something else. I try to follow the guidelines on MSDN. Here is a good article on guidelines for names in .NET Framework 4. The case I am using for app settings is called Camel Case because it begins with a little letter, but it has a big letter somewhere in the middle of the word. Here is a good page on MSDN for capitalization conventions. One of the many articles I read on isolated storage was how to create a settings page for Windows Phone on MSDN. Links are in the video description, so you can look while I do if you want to, or look later. Another good article on MSDN is Isolated Storage Overview for Windows Phone. Bob Tabor's videos on isolated storage are really good. I have a playlist for his entire Windows Phone for Absolute Beginners series on my Learn by Crystal channel. The meat of isolated storage starts with Day 3, Video 6, Understanding Isolated Storage. Now that I have declared app settings, I can assign a value. Equal sign. As I start typing isolated, I see there are four classes starting with isolated storage that I can pick from. Isolated storage exception, isolated storage file, isolated storage file stream, and isolated storage settings. I choose isolated storage settings. Then I type a dot to see what choices IntelliSense will give me. I type A and press tab to select application settings. Then I type semicolon to end the line. This is my complete statement. Isolated storage settings space app settings space equals space isolated storage settings dot application settings semicolon. I have a way to reference the isolated storage area. First, I want to see if isolated storage already contains a key called my name. 
If it is already there, I will change the saved value. If not, I will add a new key. Here's my code. If space open parenthesis app settings dot contains open parenthesis quote my name quote close parenthesis close parenthesis open squiggly bracket app settings open bracket quote my name quote close bracket space equals space this dot text box underscore my name dot text semicolon close squiggly bracket else open squiggly bracket app settings dot add open paren quote my name quote comma space this dot text box underscore my name dot text close paren semicolon close squiggly bracket where this dot refers to the form my code is behind text box underscore my name is the name property of the control that has my name dot text is the text property of the control my name is what I'm calling the key in isolated storage now I will save all the files and build my solution build succeeded is displayed in the lower left corner of the screen in case you aren't so lucky I will show you how to turn on the error list control W E or you can choose from the menu I will go back to my XAML page my name should get saved I will put the selection changed event on its own line as I have done with the other properties when my page loads I would like it to read the my name key in isolated storage and display its value in my text box control I move to the root element at the top of my XAML page I create a new line and type L O I see loaded on the IntelliSense list I press tab to choose it now I press enter to choose new event handler the name for my event handler is created for me and is called phone application page underscore loaded I right click on the event handler name and choose navigate to event handler from the shortcut menu the code to load my name will also need a reference to the settings in isolated storage I select the declaration statement I typed in the selection changed event I click on my selection and drag it to my loaded event I press control before I let go of the mouse so that when the mouse is released what is selected is copied instead of moved I remember this because control and copy both start with a C note the plus sign next to the mouse cursor indicating that the operation is copy once again I want to see if the settings contain my key if the key is there I'm going to reverse the assignment the text in my text box will be given the value of the my name key in isolated storage I am getting an error message on this line the error says cannot implicitly convert type object to string an explicit conversion exists are you missing a cast I will try casting it to a string ha ah, seems to like that here's the statement that works this dot text box underscore my name dot text equals open paren string close paren app settings open bracket quote my name quote close bracket semicolon if isolated storage does not contain my key an empty string will be assigned to the text in my text box this dot text box underscore my name dot text equals string dot empty semicolon I save all and build the project no errors good yay save all again click on the green triangle to test my app I click in the text box to enter my name the emulator still remembers that I'm using my computer keyboard so I type my name now I click the back button to close my app on the emulator and leave the emulator running note that when the emulator is terminated whatever is in isolated storage is lost this is different behavior than a real phone which remembers what's in isolated storage I click on the green triangle to run my app again ah, I am remembered then take the time to sit outside and watch the sunset as it slowly melts the corners of your soul I put a candle in the window Say a prayer for those you don't know And ask the God of peace to make To make us whole David Bailey was amazing He performed a couple songs for me One of them was Miracle Change He touched me to the core and left me speechless I didn't even have the breath to say thank you He 
reset it for me. Sadly, David passed on a year ago. He was a poet, philosopher, prolific songwriter, and so much more. And he loved coffee. Where he went, he made a difference. His music lives on to inspire, give hope, and lead us to our own revelations. I consider myself extremely fortunate to have known him. Put a candle in the window and say a prayer for those who don't know why you're watching the sunset. Thank you, David.